So coming to the next program, uh, the next talk just now is the mentor talk by uh, Dr. Manoj Prasad. Uh, Professor Prasad is from NIPGR and New Delhi. I'm very accomplished. And this talk is also quite interesting because he is the first botany related talk here. So he is basically a plant molecular biologist. Uh, okay, so uh, Dr. Prashad is uh, basically a plant molecular biologist and plant geneticist. And he had been working for a long time on salt, drought, and abiotic stress in uh, millet, especially foxtail millet. And he was a fellow of INSA and NASI and recipient of uh, various awards, especially DBT's National Bioscience Award for Career Development in 2014. Over to you, Professor Prasad. Please unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. So I, I should share my screen first. So good evening, everyone. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to talk to you at this important young meeting 2022 organized by India Bioscience. First of all, I would like to thank the India Bioscience team for uh, this uh, wonderful uh, program. And I would like to give special thanks to uh, Dr. Felix Blast, whom I have known since a few years. And I have seen him to be active in conducting outreach and research related activities. Today, I, uh, we are going to discuss a very important topic, which is climbing the career ladder, roles of mentors and mentees. In the next 15, 20 minutes, I will be giving you the tips and tricks to climb the career ladder up. Making a career in biological sciences has become increasingly challenging, and it is a concerted effort of the student and his or her mentor. Both mentor and mentees should work together for making the career of the mentee, and this is not the case in several incidences. So in my presentation, I will briefly talk about who I am, what I am doing in research, how my mentors help me my academic transformation, how I reciprocate my mentor's help by assist, assisting my students, and how my students have achieved success, what is the key to their success. More importantly, students should work on strengthening their CV, which is needed at this present time. Several students have a PhD degree and excellent postdoctoral experience, but they are not favored for job just because their CV is not strength. How to strength the, uh, one CV is the task that several of us fail to do. In my presentation, I will also be showing how to make your CV strong with the help of your mentor. In the end, I will emphasize the importance of publication and how we select suitable mentees for our laboratory. With this brief preview, uh, today I'm going to begin my talk climbing the career ladder, roles of mentors and mentee. So this is the outline of my today's talk. I will briefly talk about science that we have doing. Second is the dealing with failures and successes and overcoming these challenges. The third one is role of a mentor in setting the career. Fourth one is approach towards hiring and mentoring students and postdocs. Fifth one is day-to-day -day job likes and dislikes. Six is setting a career path. And finally, I will go to the conclusions. So this is the uh, area of research I work on. I work on plant virus interaction, as Felix has said. And uh, we work on, on the crop tomato. And the research area, we are basically in the mechanistic uh, one, that how uh, to decipher the uh, small RNA mediated resistance against tomato leaf curl infection. And for that, we publish papers in high impact journals, along with we also published review articles so that the uh, student can get benefited for their strengthening the CV. Second uh, area of research is we worked on uh, uh, plant autophagy. It's very few labs works in the world, although most of the people uh, autophagy reported from the animal system, but uh, we recently started for the last five years autophagy and we have got very good result. And we also work on uh, dead, dead box helicases, ubiquitin proteasomal pathway genes. The, our main objective was to find out the disease resistance mechanism against the deadly virus that is tomato leaf curl virus, which causes 100% yield loss once this virus attack the plant. 
The third one is the enhancing the tolerance of tomato cultivar by RNA directed DNA methylation. So you also do whole genome methylome study to know the role of uh, RDDM, how they provide tolerance against the virus. And we also publish research papers along with the review articles. Finally, development of functional DNA markers against the tomato leaf colony the leaf virus. Coming to the other topic, as uh, Felix said, that we work on this uh, wonder crop, C4 model crop, Foxton millet, uh, because you know that uh, this uh, Foxton millet, all the millets like ragi and others, uh, you can eat uh, ragi dosa, they are very good in nutrition uh, aspect. If you compare protein, carbohydrate, vitamins, minerals, all the millets are three to five times much, much superior as compared to staple crop rice and wheat. So we wanted to know the, what are the uh, macro micronutrients which make this crop more uh, nutrig uh, nutritionally uh, superior as compared to rice and wheat. For that, we use different uh, genetics and genomics approaches. And at the same time, as I said that this is uh, this uh, fox, all the millets are C C4 uh, model crops and uh, uh, they are much, much better in terms of stress biology. They can withstand heat, drought, all the abiotic stresses because their photosynthetic efficiency is much, much stronger as compared to the C3 grass like rice and uh, wheat. So where there also we want to characterize the stress responsive genes and proteins which make this plant more tolerant against these uh, abiotic stresses. And there also we, we publish research as well as review articles. We also develop some genetic transmission protocol that is very important for any crop improvement program because all the C4 crops is very difficult to transform, but we have successfully developed this transformation protocol. And we also do uh, genetic studies through genome-wide association mapping to identify the QTLs for this functional characterization of genes related to nutritional and abiotic stress tolerant gene. Finally, we also work on nitrogen use efficiency because you know that nitrogen fertilizer use is a very huge problem in Indian context. And there are a lot of uh, nitrogen uh, things has been utilized by NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium by the farmers for a higher yield. And it is actually not good for the, uh, the environmental condition. Now, coming to my academic uh, path, this uh, timeline shows that uh, my journey from uh, 10 plus 2, BSc, MSc, PhD, and then a brief postdoc at uh, Merit. And then I got the Humboldt Fellowship at Germany. I spent four years at, as, a, as a Humboldt Fellow, two years, and then two years as a research scientist at IPK Katastrim, Germany, in the eastern part of Germany, near to Berlin. And then I was appointed as a scientist at NIPJR in 2004. And after that, uh, the journey begins as a PI, and I got this DBT uh, uh, that uh, awards, uh, as I uh, said. Uh, and I, in between, I also got the Young Scientist Award the work what I have done during my PhD and postdoc in India, and then uh, the different awards and become fellow of all the, uh, all the three national academies in India. And recently in 2018, uh, I got this J.C. Bose National Fellowship because this, you know that J.C. Bose National Fellowship generally people used to take after 55 or 56, but I, I, was, I was not going for this. I, I tried to get it at the early age, at the age of 48, because I think that if I get money, I, I can do uh, much more uh, good research. And in 2021, I have been appointed as an uh, honorary adjunct professor at, at the School of Life Sciences Department of Plant, uh, Plant Sciences in University of Hyderabad. So this is, in a nutshell, my academic journey. And I, I, can, I, can, I can confess that I am basically a mediocre student throughout my life, but uh, you can see how I transform my, my dedication and sincerity and hard work to make a meaningful conclusion. So these are the people are main, my mentors. I did my PhD under the supervision of Professor R.K. Rajat Kanti Chaudhary at Department of Botany, uh, Calcutta University, and Professor Arun Kumar Sarma from the beginning and at the end, till date, he, is, he served as a mentor for me. And then a brief, as I said, a brief postdoc I have done with Professor Puspendra Kumar Gupta at uh, Merit University. Now it is known as Chaudhary Chan Singh University at Genetics and Plant Breeding Department. 
And you might have read his several books on elements of biotechnology, cytogenetics, and, uh, and, and so many things. And then I did my postdoc with Professor Andreas Garner. He is the pioneer in the Barley genomics. And I, I, I got an opportunity to work with him for two and a half years as a, a, a postdoctoral fellow. And I have learned a lot from, uh, from his uh, uh, group. And then, as I said, that Professor Arun Kumar Sarma, who saved my life as a mentor from the beginning of my PhD. And he, he one day sent me a message, a mail that Manoj, if you are interested to return back to India, there is a new institute, which as Professor Asit Dutta heading, you can send your CV and uh, you can try your luck. So in 2003, I, I sent my CV uh, as a scientist so that I can come back and I can join the nation building. And this is Professor Asit Dutta. I think everybody must know he's the founder director of uh, National Institute of Plant Genome Research. Currently I'm working at, he was a former vice chancellor of JNU, and he is an excellent uh, uh, leader. And I have learned a lot from him also. So these are the mentors with whom I have worked on. And I learned all the good things from him, them, and it is helping me day to day to also guide my students also. So this is the transformation you can see in 1998 at the University of Calcutta Botany Department. Uh, uh, there we have a, a very good uh, facility through this Rockefeller Foundation Rice Project. And I learned all these molecular bio, basic molecular biology techniques due to this Rockefeller Foundation uh, stuff and, and which enriched me uh, with, uh, with in, in the genetics, genomics and plant molecular biology. And this is 2021 I, when I joined as a honorary adjunct professor at the University of Hyderabad. So coming to the student achievement, you can see that the mentor is known by his student achievement. Otherwise, it is very difficult to uh, uh, come up in the field. So you can see here this girl, Charulata. You know, now she, is, uh, she got all the awards, what is available as a young scientist. And, uh, and uh, she characterizes the, uh, the drip transcription factor, which is conferring drought tolerance in foxtail millet. And then I'm going to talk about Navisha Sarma. In 2011, she joined my lab and worked for a small RNA mediated defense mechanism underlying tomato leaf colony virus, as I said in my research topic. And she has deciphered the function of microRNA 159, how this microRNA 159 provide tolerance against this deadly virus. She got the INSA Young Scientist Medal in 2019. She got the 2020 Sir Woven Excellence Award. And uh, yesterday she defended very well this uh, uh, Inspire Faculty uh, Award. Uh, I am hopeful that she might got. And then coming to the, my third student, Muthu Milarasan, uh, who is also similarly a very, very talented guy. And I can tell about him that uh, he is a very poor background student. Uh, actually, uh, for, uh, his, uh, his father was a, a daily US laborer. But you know that if you have a potential and you have dedication, sincere, sincerity, you can, you, can, you can achieve whatever you want to get the goal. So he got inside NASI uh, Young Scientist Medal Inspire Faculty Award. He got the Fulbright Nehru Doctor Fellowship Award during his PhD period. And he has developed the genetic and genomic resources in Fox 10 millet and demonstrate their application in genetic, genomic breeding. Swati Puranik, uh, he's a, uh, she is a partial student, uh, joint collaboration with uh, NIPGR and Jamia Hamdad. Uh, she characterized the role of uh, NAC transcription factor confirming salinity tolerance in Fox 10 millet. She got this Marie Curie Fellowship based on his PhD work. Pranapanka Sahu, she all, he also uh, did uh, the uh, deciphering the molecular mechanism of uh, one of the ubiquitin proteasome pathway gene, RPT4 and how this gene has helped in providing tolerance against this deadly virus. And he also got the Mary Curie Fellowship in 2017. Asis recently completed his PhD and he is a wonder boy. And he, he was brave to work on autophagy uh, genes in, uh, in tomato. And he showed for the first time that how this autophagy uh, play an important role against this uh, deadly virus. So he recently got the Indian Virological Society Young Scientist Medal in 2021, which was held in Hyderabad. 
Avadesh Kumar Mishra, he characterized these uh, WD40 proteins uh, is conferring resistance against these uh, different abiotic cestrons in Fox 10 millet. And he got the, uh, the brief scholarship during his PhD program. So these in brief, uh, uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, students, they did their work and they get the reward from this, uh, their uh, dedication and sincerity and hard work. So coming to this uh, reason for, uh, uh, for student success, if I talk about, then it is 100% uh, independence to ex experiment on their then. I never support any student to do experiment by my own, because otherwise they cannot learn. The second one is no stringent evaluation of performance except a monthly lab meeting, because I know that they are also circumvented with several problems. So we cannot put uh, extra burden to them. So th there is a, a lenient way I try to run my lab because I want, I monitor them closely. If I found that they are not going in the right path, then I intervene. Otherwise it is easy going. Special attention towards encouraging their writing and speaking skill. This is very, very important thing. Most of the students, those who are coming from the a rural background, they are very poor in writing and also speaking. This is very important uh, and the, there is the mentor's role is very, very, very crucial. Exposure to editorial processes like reviewing, editing, etc. Whenever I got a paper for, uh, I am handling 10 to 12 journals as an associate editor and try to, uh, try to give some of this workload to these uh, students so that they can learn how to review. And for that, I also take some, uh, uh, some presentation that how to review a, a research paper and review paper and how to speak and how to edit this thing. Then freedom to attend any conference symposium and present their work. This is very, very important thing. Until the student can go to attend different conference, conference and symposium, how they will learn how people speak and how what is the going on in there. Liberty to apply for any fellowship award whenever they are eligible. So this is very also impo important. You have to be very liberal. If any student comes to you, uh, sir, uh, madam, I want to uh, submit one this, uh, apply for this fellowship or award. Can I do so? So you should encourage them. Yes, you should, Until, unless you apply, how could you get it? Student encouraged to visit other labs to get assistance if required. This is very, very important. I, I, I found that in most of the cases, mentor disallowed the student to talk to the other people. This is not acceptable at all. So I always ask my student, please talk to other lab student and whosoever is, is good in any of this experiment, talk to them, follow their instruction and get the help from him or her. Student encouraged to assist other lab if any help is out. This is also important. This all this thing is depending on mentor's mentality and frequency. How mentor is mentoring his student? Because if you allow your student to talk to the other people, other lab students, so automatically the other lab student also come to your student and they can also take help. So this is very important. Now there are some some aspirations should be there for the student that curiosity and persuasion strong desire to learn something new, love for the subject and patience, open-minded and cross-border thinking and ability to ask questions. So these are the five very, very important aspiration one should do, create it in the students. Otherwise, uh, I think this, uh, whatever we are doing, it's not fruitful in longer run. So uh, the student generally, they try that uh, to, to work on a comfort zone. So the first is they are academically brilliant so that they want to keep this thing within this uh, uh, academic zone. But we have to go through and they want to feel safe and in control. Then we have to put them in the fear zone. Means lack of self-confidence, find excuses, be affected by other opinion. So these are the three important fear zone of the students. So we have to handle this thing very carefully. And then we have to put them in the learning zone. There we have to teach them how to deal with the challenges and problem, how to acquire new skills. If somebody in the next bench is doing something new experiment or new technique, one should have to learn from them, extend your comfort zone. So you have to ex extend the comfort zone, otherwise you will not learn. And then the growth zone, 
Rojan is to find the purpose, pursue the dream, set the new goals and conquer the objectives. So these are the four different phases when the mentor should teach the mentee how to go from the comfort zone to the growth zone. So in finally, the mentor should provide opportunities and appropriate platform or environment to the mentees to reach the growth zone from comfort zone. Now, what is the mentor's responsibility it does not end in providing PhD degree. Because if you think that the mentor should guide the student till PhD degree and then his job is over, this is not true. Because so the many students pursue undergraduate and postgraduate courses without knowing what to do next. So the, here the mentor has an important role. So once they, in such cases, PhD seems to be safe option to many of these students. However, after pursuing five years of PhD, they do not know how to navigate further. And in such cases, they go abroad for postdoc experience. Now, this from graduate to postdoc is a decade. As such, if we count the UG, PG, and PhD and postdoc duration, it amounts for a decade, which is not a small time. How one wisely spend this 10 years determines their academic fate. So we have to teach the students that, look, these are the golden period you are in venturing. If you make use of this golden period, you will, the whole life you will enjoy, otherwise you will be perish. So this uh, slide shows the ambition of a student over the time scale. So when he joined, he thinks that I can win a Nobel prize or any of these academic prizes. We, I can revolutionize the field of my research area. And then the, among the time lapses, he wants to become a scientist or a professor. Then when he fails this, then he tried to get any job. And then when he failed to be, get any job, then he go abroad and hope. And finally he said that hope I can eat home food someday when he want to come back. So the take home message is that many mentees lose focus and ambition with time. And P as PhD and postdocs are more of a frustrating and stressful journey. It's not easy to do PhD and postdoc. In such a case, they get only the degree without strengthening their CV. So getting a degree is not a, 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 a desired thing, but the thing is this, you have to strong your CV while getting the degree. So this picture was very, very alarming. So this graph shows that if you are more educated, you are getting the job absorption is very less. So you can see here, no education, primary education, secondary education, second, higher secondary education, graduate. More than you are educated, the employment, employment rate is more high. There is a recent report that over 93,000 candidates, including almost 4,000 PhD holder apply for a PUN job in UP. If you see the unemployment rate in April 2019, this is 7.6%. And this is before COVID. You can think about the situation right now. And this unemployment rate is increasing almost two times in the past two years. And if I talk about the women graduate, they are in a very worse form. So out of 35.3, only few percentile are getting employed and 31.1 is unemployed. So those who fail to strengthen their CV ends up nowhere. Now coming to this uh, uh, statistics, uh, this is the 2019 picture that only 10 Indian scientists on list of the world, 4,000 scientists. And this has been doubled in the last two years. So if I talk about in percent, 0.25% of the global high cited researcher are from our country, India. So RSE from India is not equivalent to abroad PDF. Going abroad is easy, but returning back is not. Opportunity abroad are also limited because most of the thing I have found that during from my days to till more postdoc opportunities are for the annual system, but not very limited for the plant system. More PhDs, but less job. And this is very alarming, substandard PhD. If I see the country-wise most doctoral graduate, India is at the fourth in the, in, in the tally. 
in this is 2014 data. I, now I think it is just double. So per year, 24,000 PhD from 2014. So it is, I think it is almost 40,000 now. So we are producing PhD, we are fourth in, in the tally after United States, Germany, United Kingdom. But getting job, we are not in the good shape. So what the student talk about? What is the biggest challenge of science? They say the getting a job. So if you see this cartoon shows that for a, getting a job, there are several applicants. And after shortlisting, four or five of them has been shortlisted. And then finally, one or two has been selected. So who will be academically successful? The one who has a strong CV. And how to make a strong CV? You have to do internship during your uh, academic career. You have to get the awards. You have to attend the conferences. You have to get the membership of different academia. You have to publish quality papers. And once you have published quality papers, you will automatically get the citation. So there is an equilibrium between the PhD and the papers, quality papers. So PhD without quality papers and papers without PhD has limited scope in the job market. So you, all the academic people, they known for their literature published, whatever literature they publish. Otherwise, how could you express that who, who, who you are? So based on your quality papers, you vouch for your job. Otherwise, it is very difficult to stand. So there are different aspirants for different category, like PhD and postdoc, they aspire for how to uh, publish papers. How many pub, uh, papers, uh, quality papers should I publish during my PhD and postdoc? For assistant professor, how often are my papers will be cited? Because based on their citation index, your ranking will be there. Associate professor, will my paper get me to my next grant? Because the reviewer also see how you are publishing and what are the kind of quality papers you are publishing. And for professor, will my paper get me award and honors? And for emeritus professor, will this paper get my student a job? So these are different uh, section of wish. Uh, so just a reminder, you have three more minutes left. Okay. Yeah, I'm just almost there. Okay. So if you see the criteria for shortlisting candidate for interview for post of assistant professor in different university, you will be astonished that 80% of the score was for academic. That is, you can't do anything. And there is no difference in academic score. But the difference is in the research publication. 10 marks is there. If you have a good publication, you will get to be differentiated from the others. So what is the evolution of this? Publish or Paris? or publish in a high impact journal or Paris, or publish frequently in high impact journal and may be you would not be Paris. So this is the evolution of. So if you want to take any student for internship, we just go for this at least go throughout first division and prefer six to 12 months of, uh, of uh, training. PhD, you have to meet the national eligibility test until unless there is no mean you can, should not take anybody those who are not qualified net. Interest in the area of research relevant to the lab is very important. If the student is not interested, then there is no need. Writing skill and zeal to improve. And for a postdoc, you can choose from the publication record of the student and PhD from reputed institute or university. So in conclusion, I should say that mentorship is not just about training the student in technical skill. You have to teach them how to write, how to speak, and how to do your job methodically time to time. Mentees should understand that enhancing the skill set and strengthening the CV are important to succeed in the job market. Mentors should not limit themselves to guiding the mentees for PhD or postdoc, but also provide them sufficient opportunities to strengthen their CVs. Successful scientists have a strong mentor-mentee relationship, and this relationship, when broken, affects the career of mentees. The success of mentee is the success of mentor. This is the time and time I'm emphasizing. This you people are very young. So once you became a mentor, so you should teach the mentee so that they can get success and automatically 
the success of mentee is the success of mentor and this should be realized by all the mentors mentees should also be grateful to mentor throughout their career as i remember my mentors as i said during my first talk so by i would like to end my uh, talk by quoting one uh, uh, american author tim fergo leadership is service not position once you understand this thing you will be a very good person you will be liked by all your students and you will be in a higher place and if you want to learn more about this thing we have recently written uh, in october 2021 in trends in genetic research and leader at twist tell you must read this uh, science and society article how good leadership is important for an, an efficient functioning of an organization phd and postdoc research is a mentally challenging job and a good mentor must be able to both treat student with compassion and provide motivation so thank you very much for your patience leader uh, listening and if you have any question you can mail me and you can also ask me right now thank you very much yeah thank you so much professor prasad it, it was uh, you know it's a it's a big opportunity for all of us to listen to you and this is a first plant based talk and uh, you, you know you had an amazing journey you shared your life story and uh, you emphasized the importance of the curiosity uh, you know for the uh, mentoring as well as for the the phd students uh, you know why fostering curiosity is really important and also you highlighted the importance of communication skills both oral and written uh, as an important part of the mentorship roles and also i really liked what you said about uh, you know strengthening the cv of the your student the phd student is a remain remain the responsibility of the mentors i i really like that point and yes yeah, so uh we have few questions so we are already running out of time so let me pick up uh, one or two questions here so the first question is that uh yeah so uh, first question how do you select students for your group phd as well as for the pdf what are what are how do you select what what are the things that you really look for so uh, this is asked by anuntri yes okay as i as i showed in my uh, the thing that those who are coming to us there is a no difference between quality of student because they they are all qualified net all india entrance exam so what i wanted to learn, uh, ask them first who you are from where you are coming and what is your family background number one number two what you want to do in my lab and then after uh five or uh, 10 minutes brief introduction i asked my senior student uh three four those who are uh, doing uh, after phd postdoc to interact with these students and i take the feedback from my uh, student uh, to select the uh, uh, phd student uh, by interacting with them so first i interact and then i hand out over to my senior peer postdocs to interact and i i also get the feedback from them because ultimately the phd student new phd student has to work with the uh, the junior and the and and, and the other staff so they have a voice should be voice that how he or she is uh, behaving and what is his or her mentality so i also listen mostly 90% i listen to my student for selecting uh, any any new student for phd all right sir so we have one question very interesting question from uh, amit pathania amit could you please unmute and speak out your question okay okay sir so thanks uh, for such a nice talk uh, are you able to hear me yes yes yes, yes. go ahead amit oh, yeah, yes yes so thanks a lot for such a nice talk and uh, welcome to everyone here so i also belong to a rural background and certainly i was i have done phd from very premier institute cdft uh, center for dna fingerprinting and diagnostic and i was very poor in in writing english now i can speak english well and i can also write english well but certainly when i was doing my phd uh, what do you think the strategies that uh, one student and even pi because uh, it is a responsibility from both the guys to improve the writing skills of a students you know it is very so very uh, amit uh, this is very 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 important question and i do a very simple task to the student who comes to join my lab so i keeping on interest either he or she wanted to work on a biotic or biotic stress or any development biology something like this so keeping in this view in view i want him or her to write uh, to go for the literature review what is he or she knows about the area 
where he, he or she wanted to pursue his career. And I asked him or her to write a one page, uh, uh, his point of view, what is the bio background of the uh, PhD program he or she wanted to work and, uh, and what are the different way to solve this problem. And from one page writer, uh, I take and then I run the plagiarism software at Tiny Team to check whether he or she is uh, not copy pasting this thing. And uh, by this way, uh, if there is a um, MPL on the more than 10, 12 or 15 percent uh, similarity, I call the student and then I ask them, look, that uh, you cannot do this because this is the ethical problem. And it's, you do not know this thing, but I think now it, nowadays is very important. You, whatever you know, you have to write it in your own language, own, own way. So the same thing you want to feel, uh, communicate the audience in, a, in your own way. So by this way, I just try to find out how much writing or skill uh, the student has. And if he is good, then my job is very easy. But if not, then I have to put some extra effort to give, uh, give her or him the task to uh, more literature review and then ask uh, that you just write one page. And by this way, I try to improve the writing skill. And my, as I said, that monthly I used to talk to uh, one student uh, from my lab, and there they have to present one uh, a research paper, depending on their interest area of interest. And from there, I also try to uh, try to improve them. And I I always tell them that you before you talk to the lab meeting, you should also try to practice yourself and you, 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 if you talk about this thing, your uh, presentation, two, three, your close friends, and then it, it, automatically they will give you some feedback. And by this way, I try to mentor them, also myself and also ask my senior student to help them to uh, write and then uh, to guide them to how to speak. So this is Amit, uh, my take that you just Leave, leave some patience and then give the, the student in an easy way. Don't uh, trust or don't trust him. So yeah, I think uh, all the students are good actually. And mentors work is to always the, uh, the mediocre student to the good student. As I said, myself was also mediocre student. But uh, as I said that, uh, sincerity and hard work, this is very important in research because research is not for everybody. This is very important. And I, in the first day, I tell this thing to my student. If you spend five years with hard work and sincerity, the whole life you will enjoy. If you waste this golden period, you will be in, you have to perish. There is no other way. So I will yes. not yes. help, or I will not, I will be helpless actually. Yes, thank you so much, Professor Prasad. It was really a pleasure. And I really like the, you know, there is no one size fit for all. And you need to actually test the, the, the mentees to, to see that how, how good they're performing return and oral communication. Then it's the same message was conveyed yesterday also in, a, in another mentor talk in the YAM series. So thanks a lot for joining us and uh, thank you so much. And I wish you very best. So thank you. Moving thank on you. To the, yes, thank you.